Was that Pauline or hey. Diana? Everybody, welcome to the Fuel the Fight podcast. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Nick Barringer, and we are back in studio today. Super excited, really pumped. We got a, a special guest, Colonel Mike Story, is joining us all the way from the War College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Um, and, and today we're going to talk about something that we haven't talked about that I really wanted to talk about. I've been searching for that perfect guest to talk about it, and I found them. We're going to talk about mindfulness. And uh, I think, uh, you know, Colonel Story is going to have a very unique perspective in that this is, you know, kind of some of the stuff he's been looking at. But then also he's a, a very, you know, well-accomplished Army leader and a commander and how those mindfulness practices has influenced his command. But I don't want to, you know, steal his thunder just yet. So I want to go ahead and uh, welcome to the show. Uh, Colonel Story, welcome to the show. Hey, good, uh, good morning and thank you for the, uh, the invite. It's uh, great to be here today. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of want to start off is, can you tell people, you know, what is your Army story? Like, like what brought you in? Oh, wow. <laughs> Without being long, I'll tell you that, you know, I had family members that were in, right? My father, grandfather, um, uncles. Uh, so in some sense, I think I've always uh, was destined to join the service. Uh, uh, and, and I think uh, just looking at their examples kind of led me. I was uh, enlisted. First, I was a medic. Um, and, uh, and then I, I found a way to get commissioned. I got commissioned and, uh, and so now it's been about 22 years as an officer, um, but I'm a medical service corps officer by trade, specialty environmental science and engineering. And, um, um, and right now I've done a variety of positions, uh, to include operational assignments, but, uh, one as an instructor there at the schoolhouse, um, as well as, uh, at medical facilities. So, uh, you know, I, I look forward to my continued army journey. No, no. Th thanks for that. And then you're you're at the Army War College. Could could you give uh, for you know maybe some listeners that, that don't know what that is, like a you know a, a quick elevator you know pitch of kind of what the Army War College is and why it's so important. Yeah, you know, uh, one I'll say that uh, there's a number of war college, right? There's Army, Air Force, yeah. uh, Navy, and National. But uh, you know, the Army uh, War College uh, and really all of them, right? They're they they provide graduate level instructions to senior military officers and civilians and write and really prepare us for senior leadership assignments and responsibilities. So um, what's great about it is our, our population is mixed, mixed in the sense of different specialties, right? We have infantry and armor, signal officers, uh, but as well as international partners, right? And all of that allows perspective uh, as a senior leader uh, going forward. No, that, that's awesome. So, so what was your, you get a strategic research topic at the Army College. I think I kind of alluded to it, but, but, you know, tell us, you know, why you chose what you chose and, and a little bit about it. No, thanks uh, for asking that. You know, I'll say that, you know, the topic I focused on was mindfulness, mindfulness as a training tool to improve uh, human cognitive performance, right? Uh, specifically looking at emotional regulations, right? Um, improve focused. Um, and I try to juxtaposition this in the future fight, right? What will our soldiers face? Um, and the great thing is it allowed me to kind of go out, talk to leaders uh, in, the, in different uh, institutions in the Army. I only look at the Army now, uh, but allowed me to talk to uh, leaders in academia, right, in the Army uh, professional education realm. It allowed me to talk to divisional type units as well as special operations. So just a lot of leaders out there doing great things. Uh, so definitely want to share some of this. Uh, now there's uh, room for improvement, of course, but I think uh, we are moving in the right direction. Very nice. Well, so... I mean, why mindfulness and, and what do you see the, the kind of the relevancy for, for that future fight that, that you mentioned? Yeah, you know, as we look at the future environment, right, multi-domain operation, large-scale combat operation, um, it is anticipated to be overstimulated in multi-informational environments, right? Our soldiers, right, and even today we probably see it, but our soldiers can expect complex, massive volumes of stimuli uh, where decentralized decision-making is going to be paramount. Uh, we ask a lot of our soldiers, and, uh, and it, it is about decision dominance, right? And that's what we're going to ask of our soldiers. So, you know, the ability to make fast and accurate decisions, to take information, synthesize it, right, reflect on its implications, apply good judgment, and make a decision ahead of the enemy, right? And that, uh, that requires a lot of cognition, right, a lot of our brain power here. So, uh, you know, the great thing is, you know, we, had integrate, we have integrated technology into our formations. So even that human-machine interface where we have soldiers doing unmanned aerial vehicles or artificial intelligence, right, that's going to require some cognition on the human part. So uh, that's what mindfulness training is about is how do we optimize cognitive performance. 
No, I, I like that. And, and maybe, you know, kind of a better way to start off is, you know, uh, you know, you kind of defined uh, mindfulness. Um, can, can you talk a little bit more about, you know, how that applies to, you know, kind of the, the slowing up and speeding down of cognition? No, thank you. Well, you know, first, I, I think it's important to understand, you know, what is mindfulness, right? Because right? there's a lot of definitions, um, and I think it's a good question to ask, right? But really, mindfulness is, is the awareness that arises from paying attention um, on purpose, with intent, in the present moment, without judgment. That's probably the general accepted terminology for it. Um, but uh, but it's really your ability to to recognize. And intention is a great thing, right? But your ability to recognize, hey, I'm not focused on what I need to focus. I need to kind of rechannel. Um, so it's it's you know as you talk about slowing down and speeding up, you know there's this fallacy to think that mindfulness is about religion, right? It's something we do in our house, or uh, but really it's not about that. It's really about speeding up. It's not about slowing down, right? And speeding up those those neuron connectives in our brains, right? The awareness of our brains, right? Hey, when are we out of the box? You know, when I think about the old jump master saying, right, fast is slow and slow is fast, right? It's kind of the same concept, right? How it's it's increasing those connectivities in our brain and being aware. Nice. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm big into to exercising just like you. And, and so, you know, you're talking about this, but if the mind is a muscle, you know, how, how can we train it for this? And, and how does it change when we do these mindfulness exercises? No, oh, great. You know, you know, mindfulness is about optimizing cognitive performance, much like an athlete, uh, to your point, right? And uh, behavioral and contemplative sciences demonstrate that human attention is a trainable capacity. It has the benefit factor of uh, increasing our neural plasticity of our brains, right? Our brains change constantly, right? Especially as we challenge it, as we use it, um, not only in its neural connectivity, but just how it's structured. And, uh, you know, this fallacy of we only use 10% of our brains is not really true. We use 100% of our brains, right? And, um, uh, but, but to your point, much like a muscle, you know, when we work out for PT, right, with consistency and practice, uh, right, if it's an ACFT, uh, you will improve your performance, right? And the mus uh, the mind is no different than the muscle, right? Uh, with consistency and practice, um, and I and I'll add in there patience, right? Uh, you don't you don't uh, get big muscles right away, or you don't uh, get endurance right away. So uh, patience is required as well, right? Because um, I think in what studies have shown, um, up to 12 minutes, right, has been has shown a beneficial factors, um, right? And we can test that with brain scans. You can, it'll show on brain scans and, uh, but up to 12 minutes, but really you can even do it as 30 seconds, right? Build up to it. That's where patients come in is to, to kind of build up to it. So, yeah. So, so talk a little bit about the, the brain's attention system. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a great, uh, there's a lot of great research and there has been right. Uh, a lot of great research on the brain, right? The connectivity, the brain's attention system allows us to connect to the world around us. That's a fact, right? And um, uh, but the brain's attention through evolution was kind of evolved, evolved because um, we can't pay attention to everything, right? Our environment is just overstimulated, right? And so the brain is a highly efficient, energy-demanding organ that gets truly fully organized. Um, but the way it does this is to comp compartmentalize attention into three systems. And um, you know, I, I get a lot of this from Dr. Amishi Jaw, right? Uh, she's doing a lot of research with soldiers. She has been right over the last 10 plus years. Uh, but but the brain is compartmentalized in the three three compartments that she kind of alludes to. Uh, one is what she calls the flashlight system. This is the orienting system um, where um, where you're focused. So much like a flashlight, you turn it on and where you point, where you point it kind of highlights it, right? It brings it to attention. Um, and that's great, right? And we need that in our brain and, and probably a, a it's also important to think it's not external, like when we like point a flashlight that's looking outside, but it's also internal. So like Nick, I'll say, hey, Nick, what'd you have for dinner last night with the family? Um, I had spaghetti and meatballs. Okay. With some vegetables, <laughs> some vegetables. No, thanks for sharing, right? Yeah. You didn't have to share, but my, my point there is that, that you had to recall that, right? Mm -hmm. Internally, right? You know, you were, you know, prior to my question, you were kind of focusing, hey, what is Mike saying, right? audiology or, or listening to the, the verbal stimuli, but then 
I asked you something and you had to focus on, hey, let me recall it, bring it to the forefront of my consciousness and convey that message. Um, so I, so that's part of your orienting system, right? Allows internal and external focus. Um, the next system is the alerting system. Um, and, and the way it's described is more like a floodlight. It's always aware, maybe a flashing yellow light, as you think if you come up on a, a four-way stop, right, warning you. Uh, could be at a, a railroad crossing, but the point is, you're always aware, right? And you think through evolution, if you were in a cave, right? And you're a caveman and you got family members there, right? Your your alerting system is always on, right? In some sense, right? Particularly if, if you think there's danger. And so, uh, but that's what, that's the, that's the second part of the system, right? And the last one is is really your executive functioning system. And that is that, the great thing about that one is it aligns goals. So as you think of all three of these systems, right? The, the um, orienting system, right? external uh, directing and, and and focusing selecting you think about your alerting system which is broadening being aware and your last one as being in your uh, as being your executive attention function and that is aligning your your goals uh, with your with your focus so the reality is all three systems do not work uh, they, they work together but what they do is they always compete so, and I think, man, I, there's a lot of great literature on there, but a lot of, some good examples of when you hear somebody saying, hey, I need you to, you're focused on some, a task, whatever that may be, and then someone calls your, calls your name, right? So they're pulling your, your, your orienting system away. And, and research has shown sometimes it can take up to 30 minutes to kind of focus back on the task you were doing. So this, this fallacy of saying, hey, I'm multitasking may not necessarily be the truth, right? You're really... Uh, you're juggling. You're essentially juggling there, and and so, um, but you know sometimes it's hard to get back on the task that you were doing, the focus task that you were doing. No, that that's great, and and I I've I've been guilty of that, and and you know learned the hard way that yeah you, you can't multitask, and so if I really have to get something done, you got to shut down those distractions. We're, we're kind of talking about you know mindfulness, but I, I do want to take a step back is in the picture of holistic health and fitness and FM seven dash twenty two. If if folks haven't read it, you should definitely read it. Um, you know how how does this tie tie into mindfulness uh, for the army? Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. I I will say this right in part of my research right to, uh, the FM seventy seven twenty two right the holistic health and fitness was published in October twenty during the COVID year right. Uh, but um, but the great thing about this manual was probably the first time, as we look at um, Army doctrine, it's probably the first time uh, that we kind of see it mentioned in a holistic document. Um, and what I love about it is it, it incorporates the all being of a soldier, right? Uh, right, the spiritual, the, the, the mental, right, the nutritional, the sleep. There's a lot of aspects to a soldier. And, and there is a chapter in there on mindfulness. And this, some of the uh, discussions I've had with divisional type units, um, and even in academia settings, but what they found is the contemplative practice. So if they'll, they'll do a PRT session, and maybe the last 10, 15 minutes during cool down, they'll, they'll run through a mindfulness exercise, right? Uh, meant to kind of focus, channel um, the soldiers, but, uh, but still doing the stretching exercise, but, uh, but use those last 15 minutes. And a lot of the units that, that I've talked to I felt, hey, that's been more beneficial uh, to the soldiers. Um, now, once again, it takes consistency, practice, you know, and patience. No, that, that's great. And I kind of like that, you know, that practical way to em employ that. Because I, I want to, you know, talk about that. Because uh, I, I've, I've talked to a lot of folks that have, have served under your command or have, uh, you know, been around you as a leader. And, and one of the, you know, reoccurring themes about you is just how calm you are. No matter, no matter, you know, what happens, you're, you're always calm. You're always cool. Um, you know, you don't, you know, you're not raising your voice. You're not yelling. Um, and, and so many people appreciate that about you when I was talking to them. And, and so what, what's your secret? What, what, how, how have you, because clearly you're doing something, has mindfulness been kind of something you've already always employed as a commander or was there a aha moment uh, that, that happened that you're like, hey, I, I need to change the way I'm doing business. So can you talk a little bit about that, how, how you've used it as a leader? Yeah, no, thank you uh, for bringing that up. And I, no, I would say that, you know, I, I grew up in a, a bilingual, bicultural family. Um, my mom is from Thailand. My dad's uh, American, right? And, uh, 
So uh, my mom was a, a practicing Buddhist. Um, my dad uh, was Christian, right? So dad would take me to church and mom would take me to the temple. Uh, but, you know, it, it really didn't come full. You know, there was opportunities when I was a young, uh, young, young boy uh, that I was with monks. And I remember the conversations with these monks um, where we would be walking out in the garden and um, they would always talk about this monkey mind. And, you know, when you're a young, young boy, right, that doesn't really make sense to you. Uh, but now that I'm older, right, and I reflect back on some of those conversations of walking meditation or even sitting down and meditating with the uh, monks, um, boy, has that, uh, so you think about comp, you know, the calmness of of that. Um, but now I have led in multiple organizations, right, I've commanded multiple times um, in absolutely uh, a stressful situation, right, to include in combat. Uh, uh, but, uh, but what I realize is the attention uh, span is, is very, very delicate in the sense of uh, high stress can pull you from it. Um, high, uh, high levels of, of uh, just things that pull your attention away. And so, uh, you know, as you think about, you know, how can I become a better leader? Um, you know, I, I'll give you some examples that I would, I always try to use. Um, one is, you know, uh, being in multiple command positions, constantly you are pulled to different meetings. This is a fact, right? Um, and, I, and I feel, I remember there's multiple times where I'm shuffled from one meeting to another, right? And uh, without an opportunity to breathe. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent, right? It's just, you just got to accept the environment. Uh, but I know usually when, uh, if I can control my calendar, I'll ask for, you know, a 15 minute break or a five minute break, uh, in fairness, to kind of get right for my mind, mentally prepared what I'm going into. Because decisions have to be made, right? People are looking at you for guidance and decisions, and so. Uh, but also, while I'm in the meeting, I try not to bring my phones, right? To, in the, uh, I've been in the army for a number of years, right? And uh, uh, phones have come into to our existence, uh, whether it's personal or professional phones. But I try not to bring it in the meetings, you know. And if you do have to bring it in, then maybe put it face down, right? Uh, because that stimuli, right? Or even your, if you have a, one of those watches, a smartwatch that vibrates or buzz, you see people in meetings or briefings. And it buzzes while it's on their arm, and it distracts their attention from what they're doing. Um, so I'm trying to be very cognizant, cognitive of if someone is talking to me, I want to pay attention to them. I want to be focused on what they're saying. Um, and so sometimes that's something you can do. But even as a parent, and that's probably a good example, um, as, as, as I told you, my wife had said to me once, uh, you know, I, being in multiple command positions, I promise her I'll always be home for dinner. Uh, and I was. Sometimes there's a later dinner, but I always was home for dinner. Uh, but... Uh, but sometimes you'd have your, your phone up, right, because somebody may, may, need, may need to get a hold of you. Uh, but, uh, you know, there was one instance where my wife said, hey, you're not present. You're, um, you're engaged. You're engaged uh, with the phone, right, versus the children or at the, at the conversation at the table. And so um, I would often uh, not bring the phone into the uh, dining room because I knew that would, that would cause a lot of distraction for myself and not being engaged. So that's just probably another opportunity, even with your, with your children, if you're reading them a book, be focused on that, reading them a book, right? And not, not remembering what you're talking to them about because that matters to somebody, right? Whether they're a soldier or leader that's trying to talk to you or whether it's a family member that's trying to engage and wants your attention. No, that, that's all uh, great advice, and I, I appreciate that as a parent as well. And I've, I've been guilty of, of what you're talking about and have learned to sometimes just leave the phone in another room. Uh, no, uh, you know, lastly, for, for the, uh, the young soldiers listening to this, what can they do now to incorporate uh, mindfulness, you know, kind of into their, into their life and practice? And are there any resources you recommend um, possibly for them as well? No, thanks. Uh, that's a great question. Um, I, I will say that there's a, there's a ton of resources, right? There's a couple of apps and, uh, you know, free apps. Now I do my mindfulness practice at the end of the day, um, and some people do it uh, at the beginning of the day. Um, I like to get to that point where I do it at the beginning of the day, um, and this is a a specific practice where I'm sitting down and there's no other distractions. And for me, uh, having young children, right, and and trying to be engaged with them, I have to wait till they're getting they're in the bed and right and, and everything's ready for the next day. But uh, but that is my time to kind of uh, sit down uh, and focus on me. So there's tons of apps. Mine is a guided. Uh, mindfulness practice, right? Uh, so I'll, I'll listen. Um, but uh, but those are those are some free apps. And and I will say too that um, no need to start like 30 minutes, right? You can start with 30 seconds. 
right? And, I'll, and I just, if I may, Nick, I'll give an example. When I was an instructor there at the schoolhouse, I had a boss, um, uh, right, a department head who had said to me, hey, and said to all the instructors, right, hey, when you come in the first thing of the day, right, into the cubicle or whatever you have there, right, um, I don't want you to turn the computers on. I don't want you to, to do anything that instead of, I want you to sit there and think. Now, you know, reflect of going back on that, thinking back through this, I was like, man, why is he doing this? Now, he, he had read an article from Google or something like that where they don't have a signed desk and things like that. But to his credit, what he was trying to allude to all the instructors there is um, time for you to kind of focus and channel yourselves before you get into the, the storm of the day, whatever that may be. And uh, uh, But sometimes as a young soldier, if, you know, if you're going into work, um, right, and you're driving in, and maybe it is just 30 seconds or a minute or something like that in your car before you even step out, right, to kind of re-channel yourself. Um, and, and, and spend time with yourself. Or maybe it's at the end of the day, uh, you don't not necessarily reflective of what, you don't want to go back on the past, but really just focus on breathing, slowing down your breath. There's a lot of things that the occupational therapies, uh, therapy folks do, right, when they look at heart rate variabilities, right, there's a lot of de devices that you can use too. But it's really about breathing and concentrating on the present moment, not reflecting back, not looking to the future, not causing those stress to kind of uh, take you off your attention or your focus, but really, uh, focusing on the present moment. No, thank you for that. So, young soldiers listening, focus on the present moment. That, that That's hard to do, I think, even more so because they've always had cell phones, right? Um, you know, maybe put those down and, and just start even with uh, 30 seconds um, yeah. or, you know, some sort of uh, a guided app. Colonel Story, thank you so much for, for sharing all, all this, this information. This is really, like I said, you know, it's, it's one of those squishy topics. Um, yes. and, and so it's, I've never had anybody condense it down and, and, you know, put it, uh, lay it out there. So, so plainly and, and so approachable, uh, as you have. So, uh, uh, really appreciate that. Um, any, any last thoughts or, or closing thoughts you want to give the audience? Yes. I, I would say, you know, as we look in the future, right in the future environment, right. For all of our soldiers, right. Uh, leaders as well. Right, it's about decision dominance and cognitive superiority, right? And this is achievable. It's doable, right? So whether you're a parent or a soldier, uh, it's doable, right? Uh, but consistency, practice, and patience is is what I think we all need, um, whether you're in uniform or out of uniform. But uh, we can get there. Awesome. Thank you again for for taking the time today. Really appreciate it. Thanks everyone for uh, listening. Uh, hope you have a great day. Go practice some mindfulness. When you hear this, go out, even if it's 30 seconds, uh, put to use some of the things that a Colonel Story laid out and, uh, you know, really practice mindfulness. Look at it in the Holistic Health and Fitness FM 7-22 if you've not already. Uh, it'll make you a, a better person, a better parent, and a better, you know, officer, non-commissioned officer or soldier. So thanks again for coming. Great. Thank you, Nick. Thanks.